Yo, we got our boy in the building. My boy Germ, Big Chef, a.k.a. Native Soul Cuisine. Yes. Come on, got Chef. Big plates on deck, big catering. My boy be moving around with it. That's in true. the building. That's true. Hey, Come okay, on. okay, okay. We have uh, some MVPs and some bench people, right? We, we definitely got some benches. Should we yes. should we lead off with, you know, who's fucking up first? Nah, no, 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 no. We do the winners first. We do the winners first? Yeah. I, like, I like that. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Give me one. We'll go back and forth like a ping pong. So first and foremost... We have an all-female auto shop run by a former engineer who has an on-site salon for customers to get their hair and nails done while they wait. So the former DuPont engineer, Patrice Banks, turned entrepreneur and a mechanic, took night classes to learn how to fix cars as she dreaded taking her own car into the mechanic and being taken advantage of. The name of the shop is the Shop Girls Auto Clinic in Philadelphia. Ooh, Shop Girls. And it's a successful business right now, which I think is dope because... I feel like a lot of people don't know how cars work. Nope. And especially guys take advantage of women. Yep, Mm -hmm. most definitely. Charge them double for something Mm -hmm. that's simple. Exactly. It's crazy because my mom always told me to dress up and look cute so you can get Mm. things. I'm like, I shouldn't have to do that. Like, Yeah. And then we get a crossover of like in a field where it's like predominantly men. You know what I'm saying? So like that inspires other women to get into that. Mm -hmm. Right. So Yeah. It's not probably a lot. Shout out to Patrice Banks over in Philly. I'm about to go to Philly. I'm going to get my nails done and my hair done and my car done. That's a vibe. That's a vibe. Yeah, yeah. Rosie needs it done. That's you already know Rosie needs it. So that's a vibe. <laughs> All right, so we got a bench bench today. Two activists that were arrested at Starbucks after super gluing their hands on the counter. Mm-hmm. Save the planet, save the cows, stop the vegan upcharge now is what they were chanting. For two hours, super glued to the counter. What? Yeah, I heard yeah. about that because didn't like dairy milk or the dairy free milk or something like that went up like 80 cents or 50 right, cents right, or something right. like that. And they're upset that they're Maybe. charging extra to mm-hmm. be able to like have vegan options. And I kind of see where they're coming with it, but like super glue in the hand to the counter is just different. I think it was a... Um an NBA or a playoff game. Yeah. Someone ran onto the court and glued their hand onto the court. Oh, but hell. before it stuck, security got her off the With court. With super glue? I think, yes. But That's I think crazy, that was the one that got bro. tackled. But there <laughs> was another girl that did that. She pretended she was a staff and she changed her neck to the basketball hoop. Wait. What? Yeah. Well, she hung herself from a basketball? No, 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 no. no. I'm confused. No, so she confused. literally, literally had a chain wrapped around her neck. Right. And it was attached to, you know how the basketball hoop has like, oh, like a post. Oh, so okay. Yeah. She what attached it to the post. Nigga, what the <laughs> fuck is wrong with people? How are we going to improve Genki security at games, bro? That shit is crazy to me, but I'm like, what is y'all doing right now? Like, I came to watch the game, not right. people attempt to hang themselves. Right. You know what whoa, I mean? whoa, like, whoa, with a chain too? Yeah. That's just bro. crazy. Like oh, that's, that's different. Anyways, shout out to you for being an idiot. Matt, take us to our next MVP, brother. <laughs> All right, so the next one is Jury Awards Man, $450,000 after an employee hosted an office birthday party against his wishes. So this one's kind of on the fence, but I feel like there is an MVP aspect to this, right? According to New York <laughs> Times, Kevin Berlin worked at Gravity Diagnostics, a medical lab, when the former employee told his manager he didn't want a birthday party because of his anxiety disorder. Okay. Despite Berlin's request, his colleagues planned the party anyway, and once he got word of the celebration that was about to happen in the break room during lunch, he decided to take a seat in his car and not participate. The next day, his manager confronted him about his quote-unquote somber behavior in response to the efforts of his colleagues, and as a result, he had a panic attack. Three days later, he was fired in an email and stated that he was a threat to the organization. (gasps) For not wanting to have oh, a birthday hell party? Oh, no. I would have yeah. sued him, too. Because you yeah. got me fucked up if I said no, nigga, no. Yeah. Damn. Especially if, like, you have anxiety about, like, I don't know, attention or whatever right, it is. Right, right. Like, that's not cool for someone to go against, like, your wish. It's or, peer like, pressure. You, exactly. Even Especially if it's if he made not it drugs. It's yeah. peer pressure regardless. Yeah. yeah. That's, so what, what about the 450000 I'm assuming he made, like, a medical claim and, like, got a lawyer and was, like, they caused, like, emotional distress or something. Damn. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so he got four hundred fifty grand. Hey, he probably went through his own birthday party. And you know how that. stupid they look? Hey, no, every no. year, I'm saying I don't want a birthday party. I'm hoping right, to get the check. Yeah, yeah, please, someone throw me a surprise. <laughs> please, I'll get the million. Please, <laughs> I will fall to the ground and have a seizure. I don't care. <laughs> Please. Oh my God. Our next bench is for a toddler that was born with two penises, what? but okay. had the larger one removed. What? Yep. <laughs> oh. I said it, and I said it loud and clear. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're benching the doctors because they took the bigger one. <laughs> Because honestly, if you're a male Why? doctor and Whoa. you took the bigger one, you're a hater. Oh, I'd be hot. Yeah, I'd like, sue. What the hell? No, Come that's on, when dog. the emotional oh, distress yeah. comes in. That's uh, what I'm suing for that. Bro, million. I need the 450 you, million. Right, that's you crazy. got the 450,000. I mean, they left him with the little smoky. Not that's the big smoky. Wing. You know the, the, the Vienna sausages? The Vienna. Like, at least let me see the size. Like, yeah. let me choose. Not like. Bro, <laughs> you're going to take away the hang time? And he had a choice. And I have to be little for the rest of my life? I honestly would have loved two dicks. 
Think about it. Wait a second. Get Whoa. my dick sucked Wait. twice. Oh, no, nah, as a female, That's you would like two dicks? No, just as a male. <laughs> oh, as a male, you would want two dicks. Why as would a male? I want to be a female with two dicks? Give me one good reason why you would want two dicks as a male. One, because I feel like getting your dick sucked would be cool. Oh, and yes. then if I were to get my Nasty. dick sucked, getting dick sucked twice. The podcast has took a weird turn, ladies <laughs> yes, and gentlemen. I don't know how we ended up yes, here, but has. um, Lil Flava wants <laughs> dephilia, which is the <laughs> disease that he was born with that gave him two penises. It's where the strands they have glands, and two of them grow during like when the birthing process or whatever, and just keeps growing into two of them. I had to take one away, or else it was just gonna get, keep going. What would it do if he were to keep? I it? I think that it, it would. Uh, what you call it? Would have had like some like uh, some medical effects on him. Mm. And I do not think I don't, yeah. I would be like, just let me rock. Yes, I'm here sir. for a good time, not a long time. God <laughs> damn, God. bro. So, wait, you would double up too? I would double up. Whoa. I just thought about it. Double up. Come on now. That's <laughs> what you guys are celebrating <laughs> that? That's crazy. It was, it yeah. was the weird I'm good. High five you gave me. That's all good. Give me another MVP because we gotta get off that one. That's only, crazy. I'm, only two. Come oh on, yeah, Come okay. On. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna chill out let's there. Let's keep it to a minimum. Let's bring it over to my boy Native Soul Cuisine. First of all, what did you make for breakfast today? Breakfast as a um, chef. Actually, so I'm doing this diet. It's called an alkaline diet. Alkaline diet. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, okay. Um, Elaborate on that for me, please. It got popularized by Doctor Sebi. Okay. Ooh, Doctor Sebi. Sebi mm-hmm. said. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What have you guys heard about him? Not not a doctor, but holistic. Uh, what's the word? Healer. Healer. Exactly. Right. He believes in like Western medicine, right? Yeah. Um, no. Like Whole no, Foods. The and opposite whatnot. of Western. Medicine. The opposite. The opposite. Okay. 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 Nipsey actually talked about him in, in a couple of his interviews. He had uh, 70 patients that he healed from like AIDS, herpes, a mm-hmm. bunch of stuff. Damn. And uh, he actually was uh, about to get thrown in prison. And uh, he had these people come testify. And they actually like gave the court proof that their AIDS was gone. What was he going to get thrown in prison for? Um, practicing without a license. Oh, okay, medical okay. Oh, stuff. Okay. That's a holistic thing. Yeah. Yeah. Which so makes sense. Actually. Like. Can't be going out here giving random medical advice. <laughs> exactly, you know, no, right? exactly. But it sounded like it was good advice in this situation, right? Well, I mean, he beat the case. Yeah. So the alkaline diet is pretty much just like raw fruits, raw mm-hmm. veggies. Um, okay. Back to your question, what did I have for breakfast? I actually had a, a couple spoonfuls of sea moss and some water. Sea moss. I feel like breakfast. that's kind of like a, a trend right now. Like, no, yeah. Breakfast. My, oh my okay. god! And, I and so I, I've been drinking the gallon of water a day. Okay. Okay. Um, Do you so, eat? Yeah, I mean, I had some papaya. Right when we were yeah, there but that's Pie like it. Different. Like you just um, eat like small portions like that, more snack size. Yeah, this is not an advertisement. I promise. Right. <laughs> not an advertisement. Yeah, I would not uh, need paper for that. <laughs> yeah, it's like <laughs> it's got like ninety-two out of a hundred minerals that your body needs. What does it taste like, sea moss? Sea moss mm-hmm. tastes like uh, has the texture of like applesauce uh-huh. mixed okay. with Jello. Ooh. It's kind Ooh. of weird. Uh, I don't Ever? like Jello. Oh really? Uh, it doesn't taste bad though. It I don't heard, taste bad. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I've seen a lot of people do reviews and just like choke on it. Like you guys are doing too yeah. much. But you didn't give us a taste. You oh, just. Taste. Oh yeah, you gave us a texture. Oh, we need man. a taste. You a chef. It doesn't on. really have a taste, honestly. Oh for real? Like it's mildly sweet, just a little hint of sweet, and right. then. Flavor is just in the texture. Oh hell yeah! You okay, know? okay, 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 okay. Yeah, it doesn't really taste like much. All right, so hmm. you're so you're okay. a chef. You have your own business, right? When did you start, and how did you make that transition? Because I know you were working, like corporate or no, not corporate. You're working. Um, I forgot what you were doing. This is a crazy story. Um, I was working. It's about four years ago. I was working at AT and T. That's what it was. And I, was I was selling phones. I had this way of finessing the system. At the time, the iPhone 10 was like the new thing. That was the shit. Right, the X. And uh, so they would come in with their 8 Plus and stuff. I'd be like, hey, uh, if you trade that in, um, you know, I'll uh, waive the taxes. And taxes on $1,000 phones, 100 bucks. Basically, I would just give them the trade in value, but uh, I would keep the phone. Oh. You know? And so, like, one day my manager took me in the back and she was like, Jeremy, you have to quit. And didn't really say why, but I already knew. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, they, they're catching on. And so she's like, yeah, I got a friend over at T-Mobile. I can plug you in with a job over there, and I can rehire you in six months, but you got to quit. And, <laughs> oh, uh, shit. <laughs> and uh, I was here. like, fuck, man. And I was like, all right, I was about to do it. While I was transitioning, I needed some money because I have, like, a car note. I'm a dad. Yeah. So I just had expenses. And um, I've always been posting food on Instagram. Like, that's one of the things, like, I like to do, like, just – even before I was doing it as a business, I would just like post it on the gram, you know? Mm-hmm. Homies would be like, hey, I would actually buy that from you, you know? And I would just laugh it off. Yeah. I wouldn't take it too seriously. Right. But at this point, I was like, I'm going to hold these people to their word. Yeah. So right. I, 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 you I'll know, pull up on you right now. Yeah, man. Yeah. I went to the grocery store. I bought some things. I made what I knew how to make at the time. 
which was I think the first thing I sold was like some barbecue chicken, some Hawaiian style mac salad and rice mm -hmm. with a little egg roll on the side. Oh, and I was yeah. selling that for 15 a plate. And I remember and you I were like, driving around, you were meeting people wherever they lived. You didn't give a fuck at the time. Nope, I, bro, I had to give my money. And even yeah. there was a couple times where I had my daughter with me and she was still like barely walking mm -hmm. and just had her like, I was just moving plates, you know? That's tacos, hustle, whatever. That's probably uh, that's that's humble beginnings. That's, yeah, that's how I started, man. Just kind of like, trapping you know yeah right. um, where did your love for cooking come from um i mean I, I think i just most recently discovered it as a love um, before i think my fascination with cooking was just growing up in a family that the guys did a lot of the cooking right mm -hmm. um because you got it from your pops right my pops was a cook okay, uh, okay. my grandfather was a chef yeah okay oh so it's in the it's in, it's the, in blood. the blood so you're yeah. chef yeah. junior yeah. chef junior it was just meant to be I chef think. the third and i didn't know it at the time yeah. but, uh, your former boss actually kind of did you a favor yeah you know what i mean when you think about Hell it yeah. Yeah. It was funny. Ass. It was yeah. um a couple times i went back to my old work uh -huh. sold like plates to everybody at the at and t oh that's yeah. a finesse hey. Isn't you that know? funny? That's full circle, bro. That is. That's you know what I mean? What's the this biggest year? event you've done? Catering. We've done a couple weddings. Mm -hmm. So recently we did like a 200 uh, or three. It was like two or 300 people, but it was a Samoan family. Damn. Oh, you know, so, you had to cook for days. Oh, to get for days. How did you prep for that? Samoans are just big for no reason. It's crazy. Give Probably me like a hundred pounds of ribs in the, in the smoker. Pounds? Well, and I didn't sleep that night because when you're smoking meat, you gotta douse it with a little bit of water and, and right. It's like a 16-hour process. Make sure right? it doesn't get too dry. I did right? not sleep, bro. Yeah. And so, like, when I was on my way there, I was like not having a panic attack, but I was just like so tired that I was just like, I was yeah. just, you know, like yeah. you ever been so tired that you're just like, yeah, kind of yeah. like feel like I'm tweaking. Yeah. Right. You're Don't like a show yourself. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Who are some of, like your inspirations like in terms of chefs? Do you have any? I think my favorite uh, popular chef, celebrity chef, is, is Gordon Ramsay. Oh yeah, he's he's a perfectionist. Mm -hmm. Right, he's like the gold standard for food. Oh, he, yeah, def yeah. he definitely is. Like, what about female? Head too. Yeah. Female chefs, um, Trap Kitchen. I remember they came to Seattle a couple years back, right? Oh, they're from L.A., right? They're from Compton. Yeah, they have this whole like coalition of like cooks that are part of their Trap Kitchen franchise, mm -hmm. and one of them's name is Monty Blanco. She's she has like a really dope personality. I took their blueprint a little bit when it came to running a restaurant on Instagram. Yeah, uh, from, okay. from from the crib. For you, is there one thing that you love and one thing that you hate? Um, we'll go with the hate first, man. I hate prepping. Oh, mm. that takes forever. The chopping? Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes with certain recipes, you have to uh, marinate things like skewering meat. It's mm -hmm. a fucking bitch because oh, sometimes you end up like when you're trying to do it too fast, you end up stabbing yourself in the yeah. hand. But it's just all the like stuff before you see it plated. Mm -hmm. That's like. You know, that's not my favorite thing about it. What I love most about it is, one is I can I can uh, offer a voice for native people and I see the community love it, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And to have them like behind me like that. Yeah, um, that's important. I love that. Absolutely, you know? I always yeah. knew you are Native American, but I didn't know anything about Native American culture. Cause I feel like it's a, it's a population that's like underrepresented, you know, in terms of like the news and stuff and like what they have going on or like even like cuisine. I didn't know anything about fry bread up until like a month ago. Like, why do you think like your community so underrepresented. I mean, we would just have to go back and look at history. Mm -hmm. Psh, colonization just took a toll on us, you know. Um, yeah, we're maybe one or two percent of the population. Yeah. So our representation is super low. And so when I um, first started cooking, I wasn't Native Soul Cuisine. I was just Jeremy Felix the Cat, the chef. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> the OG Instagram name. Felix, yeah. Yeah. Felix the That's Cat. That's my middle name is Felix. Oh, okay, okay. okay. Yeah. That's um, one of my favorite cartoons. Yeah, me too. Where were we? <laughs> we're, we're, we're on fry bread, fry bread. Fry bread. We're talking about like the underrepresentation of like yeah. native. Yeah. I think it helps me in a way because, or it has helped me in a way mm -hmm. to get to where I am now. Like you said, like I didn't blow up overnight. This is like years of work, but I'm only like four years, like a little bit under four years in the game. And I've already like stamped my name in the Seattle food scene. Yeah, definitely. Oh, you yeah. Know, I've been on King Five. Oh, what? Absolutely. Yeah, how did that happen? Explain that. Talk yeah. to us about that. Who, um, they probably tasted the food. What are yep. you talking about? Angela Allen Poe, the um, anchor for Evening Magazine. She hit you up? Yeah, she oh, DM'd me on Instagram, yeah. and I was like, I thought it was a joke. <laughs> <laughs> he said, hell no. She nah. really was fucking with this I kid. Thought, it was cool because I had an event in White Center. They were like, yeah, that's perfect. We'll just bring the cameras out. Before, it was just word of mouth type of stuff and like yeah. homies and stuff. So right. a lot of my followers were younger. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, once you get on TV, then you get like, Obviously, I got a bunch of native followers because if you see someone native doing their thing, 
Like, yeah. I'm going to follow them just off That's rip just because you're native. You exactly. Know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like you said, 1% of the population. So it's like everyone has to kind of band together, you know? And also like getting on people. the news. Exactly. Also getting on the news, you get an older demographic who might not be on social media. Yeah. You know? And it gives you clarity that you're doing the right thing. Like reassurance that you're on the right path with the whole shift. Thing, oh, oh you know? absolutely, man. Yeah, but know, also it stamps it. his name because, you know, there may not be that many people doing a lot. Our natives, and it shows that he's up there, like yeah. So you're a voice like, for the you know, voiceless, huge, essentially. Yeah, you know yeah I mean? bro. No, for I like real. The way you put that. That's that's, yeah, that's really how what I it feel. Is. I love that. Who's the most difficult client that you've had to cook for? Most I know you like chaos. <laughs> <laughs> it's usually like smaller orders where people are like, "Don't put parsley on top." Like, don't put nothing yeah. on top. Like, like very um, p- like particular, and what they I mean, yeah, that's the Instagram chef are, hack. People that are super particular, you <laughs> like know? go to a <laughs> restaurant for that. You know? Fucking, you just come to me with that. Yeah. Or, mine is unique. Yeah, or yeah. people that don't like their food to touch, like when I'm plating stuff. It's what? Like, oh. I've like, never understood. I'm not gonna lie. I have a couple of those, but like if I came to you for your. I'm not gonna tell you to separate. I mean, it came like that. I'm not. Yeah. But if I go to a restaurant, please, can you put this what, on a different plate? What is that though? Why don't you like your food to touch? Uh, I don't get it's that. a texture thing. If I were to have some noodles next to some mashed potato and gravies, it depends on what's on my noodles. When do you I ever eat noodles? Or mashed potatoes <laughs> and gravy, I eat. I eat a lot of random shit together. Yeah, I know. I just <laughs> ate a cupcake like for <laughs> for lunch. Right. Like. Yeah. <laughs> I eat anything at this point. Oh, no. I've never heard that. Con- noodles and uh, peanut butter and jelly. Wow. Yeah, well, that's what the good. Hell? That's you said that's good? Well, okay, so listen. I was looking around. No, listen. <laughs> you eat the PB&J first. And dip it in pho. And then. Nasty ass. And then. <laughs> With the sriracha. And then the sriracha you drink some water. <laughs> and then you eat your leftovers of the noodles. This is yeah, just. Do you hear this? See, I don't really you care. Cook for her? <laughs> like on Thanksgiving, Please. like you just want that plate and you. Nigga, just want to just... <laughs> Thanksgiving is <laughs> just. I'll meet you up. Exactly. Oh yeah, I'm definitely coming to your house for Thanksgiving. No, 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 no. Your shit don't touch. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. Uh, whoa, hey, getting a little. Closer. You're not invited. <laughs> oh, easy, easy. So between cutting hair and chefing, which one would you prefer to do for life? Man, chef and bro. Yeah, no, I was playing. I was testing you on that one. But you cut hair though too, and you're actually filthy with it with the fades. I'm all right. You can yeah. like the barbers. The barbers are gonna try and like have something to say, but you know, like, stop, yeah. the, the Instagram yeah. barbers. Yeah. I don't all fucking. But you don't. You guys right. don't gotta worry about it because that's not my lane, man, and I know it. I just uh, that was one of the things I did in high school. Like Primo knows, like oh, I was cutting God. everybody's hair in high school, and oh. um, at one point I saved up like I just had people come over to the house after like school like football practice or whatever uh-huh. and they needed to cut or something because we all lived yeah. together growing up we're not same together, na- but same I mean, like, neighborhood around. i'll cut like three people in a row just and that was like my hustle in high school yeah or two yeah, but but yeah man chefing all the way hey speaking on that bro you feed the homeless i like that mm-hmm. yeah. i like that about you could you be out there giving back not just specifically homeless people right um, Wanawari is an organization based out of the Central Say District. Say one more time. Which- Wanawari. Oh, okay. Wanawari. Is that a native name? It's actually an African American run organization. Oh, that and right. they've got they've got two other chefs. Basically, we're kind of like the lineup for each day of the week. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we'll make whatever. Like, there's uh, Chef Andrew. I believe his name is. He's Jamaican. He has his uh, own cuisine that he makes um, and make like hundred meals or whatever. Chef Lakia is the other chef, and she's like Cajun, maybe. Oh, like, is she from, like, New Orleans? Like, Cajun Creole? Yeah, that type of food. Down south. (laughs) Like, like, shrimp and grits. Yeah. Soul food. And you got, like, chefs. You got chefs making you real chefs. It's not no soup kitchen food. It's not no sandwich. Like, you get in a full-ass meal that you might have leftovers. And where is this at? Um, it's in the Central District. It's actually um, down the street from Garfield High School. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. And so is this for people that like can't afford to go get food or whatever? It's for it's for like families. Okay. Um, if you're gonna check it out, it's every Thursday. It's a cool little spot. Like it's a house that they turned into an art museum. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. And so they host like local artist exhibitions. And, stuff. and it's you know called what again? It's a Wana Wari. W a n a w a r i. Shout out to Wanawari. Yeah, Wana shout Wari. out to y'all. Wanawari, Wanawari. Hell yeah! <laughs> and today we got a little something different. Instead of the shootout, we're gonna do a little bit of a cookout. Okay, Ooh, we got my boy on. Native Soul Cuisine over here about to do something special with the fry bread and the chicken curry. Show us what it is, my boy. Oh my god! Uh, this is called fry bread. It's a Native American flatbread. It's a little bit crispy on the outside. It's like a chalupa 2.0. Chalupa. The traditional way to do this is to put ground beef and beans in there. But uh, Native Soul, we do it differently. So I did some uh, Caribbean Jamaican style curry. 
That's gonna go right on top. Sheesh. Right on top. A little yeah. bit of gravy just to seal the deal. You know what I'm saying? The way the mouth is watering is crazy. Right. Like I'm dying. Of course you gotta have the fresh pico. Ooh. And mm. fresh cut lettuce. Ooh. Ice spark lettuce. Final ingredient. This is called chutney. It's a tamarind chutney. So it's kinda like a plum. It tastes like barbecue sauce a little bit, but uh Ooh. it's sweet. And it's made from a uh tamarind. Look it up. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Do some research. Like Google me better. Hey, Come looks, on now. That looks fucking amazing. Wow, can I amazing. take it? Can I take it? Can I take the first Ladies one? Ladies and gentlemen, this you is do, crazy. You do a little lazy Susan. Oh yeah. Lazy Susan. Go. I like the vocab mm. in the building over here I'm with never, the black. I've never heard okay. of it. Okay. Yeah. You're not trying to promote me? Beautiful. I thought we were homies. Oh my god. I'm telling you guys. Uh, oh my god. Oh my god. God bless. God bless. Oh my, my god. Juice. Jeremy, this is you? That's juice. That's juice right Yo, here. mine just squirted. From top to bottom. It's mine squirted. squirted. <laughs> ooh, ooh. Oh, I'm good. I ain't but it wow. tastes so slap. This it's should be slapped. in a restaurant. Hey, it it's like be. a fucking confetti of flavors on this plate right here. This oh is crazy. God. The but curry the slaps so back. hard, but then the bread. The it's bread so is moist. Yeah. That's what you said. It's crunchy on the outside, but it's fluffy on the inside. Yep. So it's like, wow. it's very unique. It's I've almost like a funnel. Have you guys ever had a taco like this in your life? Never. No. Never. Traditionally, tacos like these are served with a beef and bean mixture. I took a little bit of influence from Jamaica, and then with Trinidad, I added the chickpeas. Wow. Oh, my God. Know, and the tamarind sauce. And all you want to do Native soul game? cuisine. All one word. Wow. Look, at, look at Mo's place. You guy. know what I do. Germ, <laughs> I did Don't this. spill the tamarind, though. Oh, I won't, baby. I ain't a spiller. Okay. What, 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 what do you guys... I ain't a spiller. Hey, what do you guys think of the tamarind sauce, though? Like, wow. describe it. Like, it's, like it's rich. It's a little sweet it's for like me. Little, I'm not a plum sauce. person, just in general, but it is slap. If it was spicier, it... it Absolutely. You know, it'd like, probably overpower. No, it's, it's like... I gotta run yeah. back, Jim. I gotta run one back. You know? Hey, I got a whole <laughs> thing of curry right here. Oh, uh, for real? There's two. I, I brought two. Two? So someone can take some... Can you make me one more? That was me. I think Genki needs it. No, that's fighting for it. Uh, Gank, Gank didn't get one? Genki can't have it. Should be the queen of the Period. Sorry. So sorry, That's how you know it's so you good. Y'all, we fighting for it on the black top. When you guys asked me earlier what my favorite part of chefing is, this is it. Yeah. The reaction? Oh, yeah. You know, I get to look around and see people enjoy my artwork. <laughs> yeah. See Bring people, people enjoy my together, artwork. together, too. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah I most love that. definitely. Because no. that food Bartender. bring uh, a whole lot of people Bartender. together. You know? Hey, that food will end racism. Ooh, I'm gonna say that food will end all wars right, right. now. Yeah. Right now, go. T- they need that in Ukraine and no, shit. Don't stop you fighting them. that shit don't, out there. Yeah, don't stop fighting. Uh, all right, man. So uh, this is my first time on the blacktop, obviously. But um, you know, I just wanted to give him a little gift. A uh-oh, gift? Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. For us, some, some, some you they gift can hang alert. on the wall. You gift alert. Uh oh. You know what I'm what saying? Oh. It's the art that right. hang. I know, I know Genki knows what this is. Oh, I know Kanye knows what this is. But. Look at that. Hey. But everybody's in this picture. Look, look. There's Genki. Mr. Oh Swim my. Team. That's wow. Mr. Swim so Team. Dark. And then me, bro. I fucked up because he was like, put your hands behind your back. And I put him behind my back. So I was leaning forward like looking arrested. like an emo. <laughs> Look at Primo. Oh my God. He's trying, wow. he's trying to hide. Dark chocolate little milk done. Look at hide. you. Oh, thanks, brother. That's the first gift the Black Top has received. And thank, thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank that's you. Dope. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you might have outdid everyone that's ever been on the Black Top. The food, the present. You really came and we really appreciate This is how you do it right here. Heavy ass hand. You heard that? People who are listening on Spotify and Apple Music, we just got a gift. It's a picture. It's our. What was that? Is that my junior year? Your senior? Yep, yep. Wow. So that was when we all played football together and we had the team photo before the season started. I haven't seen that picture in like fucking- You know how I got that? 10 years, bro. How'd you get that? Well, I was in detention or some shit. I was in the office. You and, stole uh, it from the school. Wow. Yeah. Once we all graduated, they're going to throw that shit in the garbage anyway. That's so, true. Oh, yeah. So then I was bro. mad. I was like, man, fuck this. I took it. I walked out the back <laughs> of the school <laughs> and I had a relic. Bro, that's from yeah. 2008. 2000 and fucking that's eight, how you do bro. it, dog. That's crazy. <laughs> Yes, sir. Anyway. All right, All right man, we got some fan, fan questions, questions to answer. From Alejandro Takes Photos, he asked, what is the most underrated sport? F1. What? You said F1. What is that? Nigga, are you kidding me? 
See, I don't know, man. Exactly. <laughs> Point proven. I know. Put, put her on, please. Man, Very you know, proven. The cars. We were talking about it the other oh, day with like my yeah. boy Michael. Stay stacked. Cars. Yeah, yeah. Dog, yeah, that shit is crazy. Niggas are going 200 miles per hour around corners and shit like that. Yeah, that I want to go to Monaco and watch a race, bro. That'd be crazy. Man, Monaco, look at you. You're a traveler. Come on, man. Global. Are you, are you excited for Euro, Cuddy? Yes, bro. It's not about me. That's about the fans. Can we answer the yeah. fan questions? Oh, well, no, it's yeah. about you. Today. <laughs> <laughs> Stay on track, my guy. <laughs> hey, hold on. Whoa, hey. Town hey, hey, hey. Talk Podcast asks favorite Seattle beach or water spot to go to. Golden Gardens. Yep, Golden Especially Gardens. Especially when the sunset hits, you look to the that left, you see the bulls. You look to the right, you see the ocean. Alki's so too hood. It's what? too active you on Alki. Like you're going too. somewhere. I think Alki. I mean, I have to go with Alki. Yeah, like, Alki. Yeah, I love but to Al-Kai. be honest, like if we're gonna be in in Seattle and talk about beaches, like we're kind of sad. Yeah, no, we're, we're struggling. We're sad. Bro, our our Alki wow. is our best. Be- Alki and Golden Gardens, mm-hmm. similar kind of like. Not you know, really like, beaches, but they're beaches. Yeah. Yeah. So we call them beaches because like we make like a rocky, like, rocky sand, water, grass. fucking no, freezing. It's smooth. a big lake. It's a. Yeah. It's a what? It's, it's a green ocean beach. on the side. It's, it's grass. That's it's a, grassland. That's really it's water that's though. Crazy. It's a little water. <laughs> I like going. It's a little more tame. How do you Alki gets crazy. Our sand isn't sand. It's like rocks. <laughs> Wait, what? Really, really big rocks. Primo, don't you like people watching? That's true. That's that's. That's where Alka's at, you know. Bro, like if you got the boardwalk the, is popping too. If you have, if you had a whip, would you take it to Golden Gardens? I'm taking it to Alka. I would go both. Going to First, Golden Gardens. Yeah. Nigga, wait, but Alka's got the second. but Alka's got the strip though, where I'm people go and show off Hold the whips. It, it is. That is you know true. What I mean? That is. Oh, if you had a whip to show off, like a hoop. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Would you like a dog. Like, would you rather go down Golden Gardens windy ash roads? Or go through that Alki traffic nah. all the way from that. Okay, if we're the talking about the actual makes your car quality of the beach, Alki got rocky ass beaches. <laughs> yeah, Cut no. your toes when you're walking. Golden Gardens is way more cozy, right. way nicer, way, way more. Who swims? Who swims at the beach? No, in who Washington really does anywhere? get swimming though? There's not. You walking through? I know you're not swimming. Who's even getting in the sand? I know you're not swimming. I'm not swimming. I'm on the beach later. You just put your toes in the rocks, huh? No, I don't go to the rocky one. I go to the nice one, the smooth one, the smooth. But you actually put your feet in the sand. Like I don't know anyone that actually takes. Off their shoes. And I did it in Santa in Monica. It. I hate t- sand in my toes. Yes, I'm not gonna lie. That's uh, the biggest. Then it gets in your socks and bro, it's, it's you take everywhere. it home for three weeks. It's, it's okay. everywhere. Just, bro, you guys don't know how to go to the it. beach. I don't even want to hear this. I'm no sorry. More. How do you go to the beach? <laughs> I go where it's nice, where it's smooth. I can't that 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 answer, answer the question. All right, how do you go to the beach? Oh, because you don't know how to explain how to go to the beach. Bro, you. Uh-oh. Eat the noodles with mashed potatoes. Oh, <laughs> and I'll like do that on the beach without getting my hands <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and it's just exactly. The fucking sand. Shit. Answer this yourself. All Bro. right. Wow. Fuck Mary Kill. Oh Lord. And you guys have to answer. Okay. This is from M underscore Sad Russell Wilson. Nigga, what? What? <laughs> Marshawn <Kill>. Lynch. <laughs> oh, or fuck. Richard Sherman. They what? Just asking you. This yeah, question. that's nope, a question for you. Nope. Our producer said we all got to an answer. Our producer did not say that shit. What if he, he did, did, I quit. He? Our pro- did he? I'm the producer. You you I never said that. You don't have to. Can I kill all of them? Man, no. Just <laughs> you can... Okay, for me, I'm going to marry Russell, kill Sherman, oh, and fuck Marshawn. Why? why? Peace mode. Russell obviously looks like a great husband. Richard is not cute to me. So oh. he just gets booted automatically. Well, he just, he a, so Marshawn's cute to you? No, but he's the next best. Beast mode. <laughs> so, it. you know. Limited options. I get yeah. it. Yeah. I get it. Kinda, if I was on the last face of the earth with him. That yeah. is a crazy is. ass fan question. Yeah, that is. M sad. All right. Last one. Zach Johnson 7 asks Ask him on how he used to record out of a shoebox in high school. Oh. Wow. Why did he do that? I got with the nowhere. No, that's nice. You know how I used to do it, right? I had the mic that would stand up and I wanted to record. But you know how you got to have it soundproof and actually have it like quiet around you to get the good vocals? Mm-hmm. I couldn't afford it soundproof in high school. So I did okay. it right. I got the shoebox with the little. You know what I'm saying? The foam on the side of it, put the mic on the inside, and it sounded great. That's a hack for you guys that are trying to come up and can't afford it. As long as it sounded great. Life hacks. That's what I was talking about. Yes, sir. Shout out to Zach. That's my little homie. There's probably ways that you finesse in the chef world. Come on, bro. You know what I'm saying? That wasn't exactly. Bro, I I borrowed homies' kitchens for Uh like a good like year or two. Oh, yeah. See? And you still got it. If you were in the area I thought might be popping for my business, I'd be like, hey. 
Uh, can I use your kitchen, homie? I'll Real feed quick. you. You know what I'm saying? Man, period. I'd be exactly. like, yes, sir. Yes, you can. And Any day. Of, and then I'll just leave him with some plates, sometimes some money. Yeah. It kind of depends. Well, you want a day. place to sleep? You got a food coma? Yeah. That's <laughs> what I mean. Yeah. That's one thing no, to remember. If, just because it's not perfect doesn't mean it's not going to work. You know? Absolutely. I've got to figure that's it out. That's a dream. And like you did, you got to try some shit. Yes, sir. To make shit work. And so. it worked. Don't be afraid to try shit. Hell no, never. You never know what's going to come out of it. Never, never, never. Wow. Well, this has been fun. Drop your socials real quick. What are they? Native Soul Cuisine. Yes, All sir. one word. Native Soul, Soul Cuisine. Cuisine. It's been a great episode of The Black Top with my boy Native Soul Cuisine, Primo, and Lil Flavor. Thank you, thank you. Come back next episode. It was The Black Top powered by Swim Team. Sheesh. Yo. Tuesday.